Welcome to the Living Witness Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Derek Thomas, and my prayer today is that the message blesses you and inspires you to be all that you can be, to reach the world with the life-giving word. Enjoy today's message. God bless. Truly, we thank and praise God for this day and for this opportunity to go into the word. And we don't want to belabor the point because indeed God has a word for us on today. And what you'll find written beginning with verse one of Genesis 35 reads as follows. And God said unto Jacob, arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau, thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. And they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, which was in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. But Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Anandakuth. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Pananarath and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall thy name be. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. As we speak today to the subject, I know where you've been, but do you know where you're going? What God needs us to understand today, beloved, is that he has a plan for us. And he needs us to not only understand where we've been and accept the challenges that we've had in our lives, but also be cognizant of where God is leading us and where God is taking us. God indeed has a set plan for your life. Yes, your life today, right now. And God wants you to understand and realize and know that he's in control and it's in him that we not only live, move and have our being, but it's through him that our steps are ordered and that he would keep us in the face of iniquity. Amen. So often what happens in life is that we get caught up in challenges. We allow the cares of this world to hinder us and the cares of this world to keep us from being everything that God desires us to be. And what our text is doing here is showing us today that we've got to be properly dressed and properly equipped for the work that God has for us to do. He, we need to be ready and willing and able to go forth and to share the good news, to be properly dressed and properly aligned with God the Father through his son, Jesus Christ, to be properly equipped with the whole armor of God so that we can be used by God to make a godly impact in the earth today. God desires you and I to have all the whole armor of God and to be well-dressed and properly dressed to go forth and do the work of ministry. And we do that by first and foremost, understanding and realizing that God is in control and understanding and realizing that God chose to redeem us, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Amen. Let's look at what the word says about this as we, as we go a little bit deeper in this. Uh, what, we, what we find here as we go a little bit deeper in this as, is, is, is this. We find as we go further along here that, that God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. And Colossians 1 verses 20 and 22 spell it out clearly. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his 
sight. It's significant to understand what's happening here. When we look at this particular passage of scripture, beloved, what we see here is two things happening in this instant. The first thing that we see happening is that God is making crystal clear to Jacob, I know where you've been. I know what's happened to you. I know the, the tricks that you pulled. I know what you did to Esau. I know what you did to your family. I know what your name means. Your name literally means trickster. So you are living up to what your name is. You are living up to what your name says. And this is why I say so often, beloved, that, that words carry weight. And we've got to be mindful of what we name our children. We've got to be mindful of the labels that we put on things because names carry weight. And each time you speak a name, it reaffirms what that end individual is. And there are so many of us that are walking around not even realizing that we're reaffirming the negative dynamic by saying our name, but the blessing in it all, even in the midst of that, I'm not saying for you to change your name. What I am saying is change your perspective. Because as you change your perspective and realize that God has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law by the blood of the lamb through salvation, we can rejoice even in times of the enemy trying to remind us of our past, even in times of the enemy trying to remind us of where we've missed it, even in times where the enemy's trying to remind us of where we've blown it, we can still rejoice in knowing that God is still God and that he loves us. And he, he, he redeemed us not because he had to church, but, but because he chose to to. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but I'm so glad he did because he loved you and I enough to give us another opportunity to do as the passage of scripture that I just read said, to, to, to make us unreprovable, to make us blameless, to make us in right standing with God once again. God desires to put you and I in right standing, beloved. He desires for you and I to understand and know and realize that yes, God says, I know where you've been, but I need you to understand where you're going. I need you to understand that I have a work for you to do. I need you to understand that I've got ministry for you to accomplish. I need you to understand that I've got breakthrough for you to be the spearhead of. God desires to use each of us in the midst of our flawed state, beloved, to truly be a blessing and to do the miraculous in the life of others. God wants to use you and I to make a supernatural impact in the lives of others. And this is why we're classified as armed and dangerous before the enemy, beloved. We're classified as armed and dangerous because the enemy knows our untapped potential. The enemy knows what God can and will do in us, but when he, and what he banks on is getting in the way and running interference enough so that you and I don't really see the magnitude of what God wants to do in and through us. And this is where we've got to build on the fact that not only are, are we re redeemed by the curse of the law, but, but as a result of salvation from the curse of the law, but not only are we redeemed, but God desires to truly reconcile us to himself by giving us proper recompense, proper recompense and proper reward for the good news that he desires to share with the earth through you and I. Look at what the word says concerning that here. The word says, as we look at it and go a little bit further in this, in, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I love the fact that it's absolute here. It's absolute because what God is doing is he's making it crystal clear that I absolutely am going to do this because if any man be in Christ. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made. It doesn't matter where you missed it. It doesn't matter how many times you've messed up. It doesn't matter how foul your mouth might have been. It doesn't matter the lustful thoughts that ran through your mind. It doesn't matter the darkness that might have resided at one point in time in your heart. If any man, absolute any man, no matter where you are and how you've messed up, be in Christ. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and here's the other absolute, and the one that I rejoice in, beloved. Behold, all things have become new. That means our speech becomes new. Our walk becomes new. Our talk becomes new. Our thinking becomes new. Everything about us becomes new. And this is where God began to move mightily. And this is where God wanted to illustrate to us just how awesome he is. We sing all the time, my God is awesome. He can move mountains. Yes, he can. And the greatest mountain that he begins to move is you and I. 
And he does it by what, just like what he did for Jacob here in our text. He meets us where we are. He lets us know what we've messed up. But in the midst of it, he lets us know, yes, you've messed up, but I need you to do this. If you're willing to give yourself to me, and if you're willing to allow me to be God in your life, and if you're willing to let me have full and unfettered access into your heart and into your mind and into your spirit, I will change you, says God, from the inside out. I will change your name, says God, from the inside out. No longer will you be recognized as whatever your name might be in the negative connotations of it, but I'll put the positive dynamic with it because I'm with it. And whenever, wherever I am, things are good. Wherever I am, God says, things are lovely. Wherever I am, God says, things are true and of a good report. That's why the word tells us to think on those things that are pure and lovely and true and praiseworthy and of good report. Those things that have God's nature in them, because when we're created a new beloved, we have have God's nature in us. We're new creatures. And because we're new creatures, God can use you and I to do the miraculous in the lives of others. God knows where we've been. God is saying, I know where you've been. I know where you've messed up. I know your shortcomings. I know your faults. I know your hangups. I know every idiosyncrasy there is about you. But because I've made you a new creature, all the old things have passed away and everything now is new. The slate has been wiped clean. So do you understand and know where you're going, beloved? Do you understand and know the magnitude of ministry that I have residing in you? Do you understand and know that my eyes are on you? And as my eyes are on you, I have things for you to do. Do you understand and know just how armed and dangerous you are? 007 carries a moniker that he's licensed to kill. Do you not understand that you're licensed to kill the, the, the enemy and the snares and the, and the and the traps and the tricks of the enemy because I've ordained you to do so, because I've anointed you with my Holy Spirit, because I've sealed you with the blood of my son. Do you not know that you're licensed to kill in the spirit everything that's not like God? Do you not know that you have authority to, to walk upon serpents and scorpions and to drink anything deadly and it not harm you, says God? God wants you and I to know today, beloved, that we have a destiny. We have a charge to keep. We have a God to glorify. We have victory to achieve. And it goes even further than that. God lets us know lastly that not only are we redeemed and not only are we properly recompensed, but, but we have an assurance that, that we're going to be truly reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And the reconciliation is going to be one so that the world is going to see it. Look at the words. Well, look at what the word says about that here as we go a little bit further, as we actually come down the home stretch of what, what God is saying here. What, what he's saying here, uh, uh, lastly and most importantly, is found in 1 Peter 5 and 10. It says, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and he settles you. What God is saying in this passage of scripture is he's saying two things. He's saying, first and foremost, that you're going to go through some things. See, I know where you've been, God is saying. You're going to go through some things because this is part of the recipe of achieving the cocktail of victory. You've got to go through some things. And as you go through some things, some things are going to be exposed in you. And the things that are exposed in you that are not of me, God says, he wants those things stripped away. He wants us to come before God in prayer. He wants us to repent. He wants us to say, God, we're sorry at the heart level. He wants us to say, we'll never do it again. And what it says here goes on to say, which is where the good news is and the reconciliation is, is that as you do this, not only am I going to, to meet you where you are and redeem you or buy you back, which I've done through the blood of my son, and not only am I going to recompense you or properly give you payment for what was over owed to you because of uh, being my son and you being out of place, now I'm going to uh, take you and truly re re redeem you to myself. I'm going to take you and truly place you back in the place where you belong, which is at my right hand, because it's at the right hand of God, beloved, where power and authority lie. It's at the right hand of God, beloved, where power and authority are for us to use, to wield, to make a difference in the lives of others. That's where the source of our power for deliverance comes from. That's where the source of our power 
the healing comes from. That's where the source of our power for walking upright comes from. That's where the source of our power for living a life that's pleasing to God comes from. God wants you and I to know today, church, that he wants you and I to walk in the fullness of the anointing because after a while, we're going to have victory. It might not look like it now, but God knows where we've been. It might not like look like it now, but God knows the time we spent in our prayer closet. It might not look like it now, but God knows the times we've tripped and fallen, but we've trusted him enough to get up. It might not look like it now, but God knows every struggle and every tear that you've cried. He knows every heartache and pain. He knows every wrong that's happened to you. He knows every hiccup and mistake that's happened in your life. He knows every miscue that we've taken. He also knows our hearts. He knows what he's placed in us. He knows the gifts and talents and graces he's given us. He knows that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knows that each of us are one of a kind. He knows everything there is to know about us. And because he knows these things, he knows that ultimately the principle of sowing and reaping in every area of life works. And beloved, because he has you and I dressed in the whole armor of God, and, and, and because he has us equipped and properly for every season, we're men and women of all seasons with the whole armor of God. The season is coming where we're going to be established. The season is coming where we're going to be blessed. The season is coming where victory is going to be ours. The season is coming where we're going to be the head and not the tail and above and not beneath and lenders and not borrowers and victors and not victims. God needs us to understand. I know the pain that you've gone through. I know the Jacob season that you've gone through. I know the trickster that you once were, once were, but I've changed your name. You're now in your Israel season. You're in your season of promise. You're in your season of breakthrough. You're in your season of productivity. You're in your season of jubilee. You're in your season of anointing. You're in your season of favor. You're in your season of overflow. You're in your season of dominion. You're in your season of power. You're in your season of grace. You're in your season of might. You're in your season. And because you're in your season, God desires to use you. God desires to use us in our season to change the seasons of life of others, to change the station of life of others. God needs you and I to be sincere about doing the work of ministry. He needs us to understand, I know where you've been, beloved, but I need you to know where you're going. You're going to a place where there'll be no more death. You're going to a place where the streets are paved with gold. You're going to a place where there's a mansion waiting for you. You're going to a place where I reside, God says. And I want you to be there with me because my son told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you, that where I am, ye may be also. But the only way that we're going to get there is if we've said yes to Jesus. So I appeal now to you today to ask yourself the question. God knows where you've been. He knows every struggle that you've had. He knows every test and every trial that you failed. He knows every time that you tried to do it right, but something's gotten in the way to make it wrong. The word deals with it. When I would do good, the word says evil is ever present. But the word also goes on to say, that there's a greater law at work. It lets us know in Romans that if we confess with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. If you've never said yes to Jesus and you desire to do so today, won't you pray this prayer with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come before you a sinner. You know my every shortcoming. You know my every fault. You know where I've been, God, but I know that in order to get to where you desire me to go, I need a relationship with you. Forgive me for my sin. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God, you raised him from the dead. Your word says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. So by faith, God, since I've met the condition, I thank you that now I'm saved. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Father God. Empower me, Holy Spirit, that together the three of you might move and work in me so that I might be a living witness of you in the earth. And I thank you for doing it now. In Jesus' name, amen. 
If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get in touch with us. Please email us at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two witness at gmail.com. We want to rejoice with you. We want to praise God with you as we praise God for you. Until next time, this is Pastor Derek Thomas encouraging you to continue to walk by faith and not by sight, knowing that it's not about where you've been, but where you're going that makes an eternal difference. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life-giving work.